It's time for us to meet the two players who will be competing in the winner's bracket final. Whoever wins this will be the first player in the top two guaranteed $125,000. So much on the line, who's gonna come out on top? Let's meet the competitors. Our very first player from Italy, it's Andrea Mengucci. Andrea is running the meta pairing of this tournament. Mono White Weenie and Esper Control. His opponent just showcased some extreme confidence in his player profile. It's from Poland, Piotr Gorgowski. Mono Red and Mono Blue, and as he just got done saying, he's a maniac running 18 land in that red deck. The most important question on everyone's mind, including the players, what will the random deck matchup pairings be? Let's find out and get into the finals. Gentlemen, good luck, have fun, shake hands, and casters, back to you. Thank you so much, Day9. All right, so we will not see a Mirror matchup in this game. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, no Esper control in this matchup, at least from one of the, uh, the players. Glugowski choosing to bring mono blue tempo. And, you know, I tried to talk to some of the other MPL players just to kind of figure out, you know, who is this player? Who is... Piotr Golgowski, because he is maybe one of the lesser known players within the Magic Pro League. Of course, he made it in, he's one of the best players, but you know, t comparing him to somebody like Andrea Mangucci, who has multiple Mythic Championship top eights, has been at this stage many times over, you know, I was, I was trying to get a sense for who Golgowski is. And, you know, I got, to, I got the opportunity to talk to fellow MPL competitor Matthew Ness, and he was saying that he felt, you know, he's seen. Golgowski streams, and he told me, you know, he actually thinks that he might be one of the best players in the MPL. Wow, those are some strong words there. Let's see if he can back it up. Take a look now at the Esper control from Andrea Mangucci, playing, of course, the Fort Fairy Hero of Dominarians. We've seen this card put in some work, as well as the single one of in Kaya, Ors of Usurper. Yeah, but a fairly stock list there. This is the list, list that many players have brought to the tournament. And of course, you can here see the sideboard because of the one copy of Mastermind's acquisition, allowing you to search from all kinds of amazing cards that are very, very powerful in very specific matchups. Cards like Ixalan's Binding, if you use that on, for example, a Teferi, they can't play any more Teferi. Same thing with Sorcerer Spyglass. We've seen Lyra Dawnbringer get searched for many times against yep. the aggressive decks. And then, of course, Unmoored Ego mm -hmm. being a card that you know, some of these decks are quite fragile. Playing a card like Unmoored Ego and getting it means that in specific matchups, it can single-handedly win the game. We have seen that already this week. Andrea Mangucci's Mono White Aggro here. Venerated Loxodon being the MVP so far in this lineup. Yeah, absolutely. Venerated Loxodon has been the card that's really impressed me the most coming, coming into this tournament because, you know, kind of the narrative, com narrative coming in was Mono Red Aggro smashes Mono White Aggro, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. you have Goblin Chain Whirler. Well, Venerated Loxodon smashes Goblin Chain Whirler. Oh, yeah. And that's what we've seen. You know, these decks have so many cheap creatures to put onto the battlefield. If they don't get that Chain Whirler online in time and you get to convoke out a Loxodon, it is really difficult for the Mono Red Aggro deck to deal with just an overwhelming board. Taking a look at the Mono Blue Tempo, the deck that's been causing many gray hairs for plenty of the Esper Control players. Yeah, and the Mono Blue Tempo deck is a deck that was kind of designed to try to feast on all the Esper Control decks in the field. Now, this deck, however, is a little bit weaker to the aggressive decks than the Esper Control decks. Of course, the Esper Control decks have lots of sweepers, lots of removal spells. The Mono Blue deck plays a bunch of one mana, one one flyers, and sometimes that's not going to line up very well against the Mono White and Mono Red aggro decks in the field. Now, taking a look at the Mono Red aggro, the crazy man running 18 mountains only. What are you thinking? Well, it's worked for him so far. Right, and it's not a huge difference. <laughs> and given that he's only going down to 18 lands, he is not playing the full four copies of Experimental Frenzy. So some concessions there yeah. just to be able to play more copies of Skewer the Critics just so that this deck can just have a critical mass of burn spells to finish off the opposition. All right, so we should certainly be in for a treat in this head-to-head. -head. Let's take a look now at the tail of the tape. Mangucci started playing in 2004, while Piotr Glogowski's only been playing since 2012, so a bit of difference there. Eight yep. years, not too shabby. Some, some difference in experience, but of course, we are looking at the recent results, and Glogowski has proven to be one of the better players in the world, as he has also made it into the Magic Pro League. All right, so as the players get ready, let's just discuss what, we, what the players would like to see in their first matchup. What is 
the best game for Andrea Mangucci? What's the best matchup? So for Andrea Mangucci, Depending on the deck, if he, for example, gets the mono white aggro deck first, what he wants to see from Golgovsky is basic island, because <laughs> the mono white aggro deck really just has higher quality in terms of its creatures and its threats. You know, you have one mana two ones as opposed to one mana one one flyers. You can play multiple creatures in one turn. And if you can resolve something like a Venerated Loxodon or even a Banalish Marshal, the mono blue deck doesn't play any removal spells because yeah. just blue as a color in general has very few ways to deal with creatures. So I think if you're Mangucci, you want the mono white aggro deck to be paired against the mono blue tempo deck, and then you want the Esper control deck to match up against Golgovsky's mono red aggro deck. Of course, the flip side of that is for Golgowski, he wants his mono blue tempo to go against Esper Control, and he wants his mono red aggro to go against mono white uh, aggro. And if that happens, I think Golgowski will be firmly favored in this matchup. All right. As you were saying about the mono blue tempo as well, there's no entrancing melodies. There's no way to steal the cheaper creatures in the aggro matchup. So it'll be interesting to see how they play around that. Taking a look now at the opening hands, this is Mangucci's Esper Control. A lot of lands there, Kaya. And we're looking at uh, the islands in, this is Glogowski's hand, yes. Right. So two islands, an opt, Merfolk Tricksters, Surge Mare, and Tempest Gen. Not a bad start. Yeah, not a bad start. I think Glogowski would like to see a few more counter spells in hand. Those, the, the counter magic is really what these creature, what this mono blue tempo deck wants to be able to combat all the removal spells of the control deck. Now, and Mangucci, as you can see, is playing the Esper Control Deck. So this is exactly the lineup that Golgovsky wanted. He wanted Mono Blue Tempo to go up, up against Esper Control. Because when you look at the removal spells that the Esper Control Deck plays, oftentimes, they're on the clunkier side, right? You have Kaya's Wrath, which is really good if your opponent's trying to litter the board with yeah. threats. But for a deck like the Mono Blue deck, which isn't, which it's really, that's not what it's trying to do. It wants to play a creature. It wants to put a Curious Obsession on that creature and ride that to victory, protecting it with counter magic. So four mana removal spells are just not very good here because this deck plays cards like Spell Pierce, dive down. The fact that you're able to trade up on mana while continuing to put pressure on the battlefield is what gives the Mono Blue Tempo deck an edge in this matchup. So Canister already starting with his emote mind games. Give me but that a was a nice hello. one. That was a, yeah, at least it was a hello. Not a, your go, your go, your go. <laughs> Opting now, taking a look at the top of the library. There's a Tempest Gen on top. Doesn't have a Tempest, no, he does have one Tempest Gen in hand, so possibly sending this to the back, trying to find maybe another land. So Tempest Gen, one of the absolute strongest threats in the deck. However, Glogowski does not have land number three. He really wants to find that third land to there be able to play the other Tempest Gen in hand. All right, so finding the third island there. Merfolk Trickster available, as well as the Surge Mare. Considering now, what do I want to do? And I have decided I'm not going to do anything just yet. Yeah, look, choosing to use the flash, flash option, our Merfolk Trickster, and play it at the end of Andrea Mangucci's turn. Surge Mare, while an excellent blocker in the early game against aggressive decks, you're simply not going to have the time or resources to be able to actually pump it to get in for damage in the early phase of the game. So I like running out the Trickster, and then maybe late game, after you've exhausted all your threats, maybe that's when you run out the Surge Mare. All right, so Tempest Gen hits the board. No protection spells for it at the moment. And if Mangucci, Mangucci needs to use this Mortify now on the Tempest Gen, you simply cannot allow the Mono Blue Tempo deck to untap to be able to protect Tempest Gen with cards like Spell Pierce, Wizard's Retort, and Dive Sorry, Down. Sorry, yeah. So the uh, Tempest Gen hits the graveyard. Terramander off the top of the library for Logowski. Yes, a new addition to the Mono Blue deck from Ravnica Allegiance, and it just does a ton of work. It gives this deck more to do in the late game, because oftentimes, you know, in previous iterations of this deck, you've had lots of 1-mana one 1-1 one flyers. Well, now, one of your 1-mana one 1-1 one flyers can become a 5-5 five five in the late game, and it basically kind of acts as Tempest Gins 5 through 8, you know, when you get to these <laughs> very long, drawn-out games. It's not been dubbed Scary Terry for no reason, I can assure you of that. The fourth island off the top, just allowing Canister to find all the answers or to be able to play more answers in his hand. Terramanders doing some work there, along with the Merfolk Trickster, just whittling away at the life total of Mangucci. Yeah, however, not a lot of counter magic, but he does have that spell pierce, meaning that Andrea Mangucci, if he finds something like Akaya's Wrath, wants to get to land number six to be able to play around spell pierce. Or, of course, we also know that Mangucci plays Cry of the Carnarium, and that would be a fantastic card here. Let's see if we can find that for Mangucci with the card draw in Chemist's Insight. 
Yeah, but the clock is ticking for Andrea Mangucci. Glogowski has four points of damage every single turn, and if he's able to string together some lands or even some spells, pretty soon those Terramanders are also going to be able to adapt and get it for large chunks of damage. Terramanders, really versatile cards, early game or late game, doesn't matter when they hit the board, you don't want them hanging around very long. And Minguchi here weighing his options here. He has the ability to play Akaya, Orzhov Usurper, but actually choosing to play Mastermind's Acquisition here and taking a turn off. And this is a really juicy target for the spell yeah. pierce. Your opponent just spent four mana to play a sorcery spell. Will Golgowski choose to use the lone counter spell in his hand to get this Mastermind's Acquisition off the battlefield? What is he digging for on the sideboard? Canister's now thinking, all right, what's there that I don't want to see? Oh, and you know what? You know what Minguchi's actually doing? He's using the... I, I don't think I've actually seen this happen yet so far in the tournament. He's searching his deck wow. or a card instead of using his sideboard because he doesn't have any Cry of the Carnariums in his sideboard. He only has it in his main deck configuration. So choosing to find a Cry of the Carnarium here so next turn he can actually play it and still be able to pay for Spell Pierce. Still or also protect it with Absorb that he has in hand. So yeah. very heads up here. Fifth Island off the top. We still have the Merfolk Trickster, a Surge Rear, and a Spell Pierce in the hand of Canister. But the longer this game goes, the less effective that Spell Pierce is. So he's going to want to find a target for it soonish. Yeah, and now Glogowski has to really try to piece this together. You cast Mastermind's Acquisition, and you didn't get one of your sweet 15 cyborg cards. Mm -hmm. What the heck did you get? Yeah. So he, he needs to try to figure this out. It's like, did he search for a Kaya's Wrath? Did he get a Kaya's Wrath? Does he have a Negate in hand? Or did he opt to go with Cry of the Carnarium plus Absorb? Because that would make a lot of sense. Currently, Glogowski is not able to adapt those Terramanders. So Cry of the Carnarium is effectively, it does the same thing as a Kaya's Wrath. However, it's one mana cheaper, yeah. allowing you to not only play around some of the counter magic that your opponent could have, you yourself could have Absorb to back up your Cry of the Carnarium. Unfortunately, only the one counter spell in Canister's hand, so this Cry is going to be doing some good work. Not much he can do in this situation. All the creatures hit the... Well, sorry, hit Exile. They're out of here. Yeah, and now Glogowski only has a couple creatures left with Spell Pierce and Minguchi now sitting at 8 life okay. with two Absorbs in hand, Teferi, Kaya, a lot going on here. So Minguchi is very close to being able to turn this around. Absorb trying to get rid of that Merfolk Trickster, but the Spell Pierce finding a target as Mangucci is tapped out, opting now to dig through the library. Take a look. Is the Merfolk Trickster enough here? Do we want to try and find a bigger threat? It looks like he's happy with any threat here, but he yep. does need to put some additional pressure here. Mangucci very, very close to being able to stabilize and turn the corner in this game. Surge Mare now threatening to hit the board, of course, also being able to draw cards at the cost of discarding. So let's see here now, what do we see in response from Minguchi? He's got, uh, he's got a whole bunch of Planeswalkers hanging out there. He's got the Mortify, Absorb. Also another Chemister's Insight, as, long, as well as the one that is in the bin at the moment, able to jumpstart. Yeah, Minguchi has several options here. He can run out of Mortify on one of Glogowski's creatures and also keep up Absorb in case Glogowski has something else. Alternatively, he can also run out of Kaya, but it won't do a ton. I mean, it will gain him a lot of life, but Kaya you cannot, can only kill creatures with converted mana cost one or less. So both creatures on the battlefield currently costing two mana Minguchi can just choose to use Kaya, however, as a continuous source of life gain. However, only one creature in Glogowski's graveyard as Cry of the Carnarium exiles all the creatures that die this turn. Yeah. So the Tempest Jin into exile as well. If Minguchi can keep the Kaya safe, he can do some damage with her minus five ability, but at that point, he might be dead by then, let's find out. Yeah, and I think Legoski at this point has to just commit more to the board and just try to end the game as quickly as possible. Minguchi sitting with four cards in hand. Okay. I don't think you're in a position here to play around a card like Kaya's Wrath. No. So the Merfolk Trickster on the end step, hitting the board. What's the maximum damage you can get in here? Could he have lethal? Currently, so Glogowski okay. has the option to attack with four from the Merfolk Tricksters and has the ability to pump Surge Mare twice. That would be eight damage. That would be exactly lethal. However, we know that Minguchi not only has absorbed, 
to counter the spell and gain yes. some life. He also has a Mortify for the Surge Mirror. But at the same time, Golgoski is pretty happy to be able to get in with the Surge Mirror because not only does Surge Mirror have the ability to spend two mana to give it plus two minus two, when it deals combat damage, you have the ability to loot, which is drawing a card, then discarding a card. Possibly what he would want to do here with the extra island in the hand. I need something, uh, I need something a little more useful, Puriti, please. But he might opt here to kill Kaya and get her off the board. Yeah, it looks like he's choosing to use the Surge Mirror here to get the Kaya off the board because, of course, Kaya is going to be able to gain Minguchi two additional life as he used the Absorb on the Merfolk Trickster. So surge Mirror proving to be a good defender as well as a good attacker when there's nothing on the board to block it. The fairy hero of Dominaria now hitting the battlefield. Right on schedule. <laughs> right on schedule indeed. No time for a break. Let's see, what do we find at the top? Another cry of the Carnarium. That'll only get rid of the Merfolk Trickster though, as the Surge Mare is a beefy five toughness. Untapping the lands, leaving Mortify available to Menguchi. And then now, now we're at a point where, it's, where it'll be interesting to see what Golgovsky chooses to do with his creatures. Is he going to attack the creatures into Teferi or try to just kill Andrea Minguchi? But Minguchi sitting at a pretty comfortable nine life here. And now Golgovsky is getting a bit flooded. He's, yeah. he's drawing a bunch of these islands and there's not a lot this mono blue can do when it just draws a ton of these lands. The only card is the Terramander that we talked about before, but you know, two of those have already been removed. So now it's a patience game for Glagowski. Needs to find something off the top of his deck. And I'm correct in saying that there's not much card draw in his mono blue, correct? Right, it, it plays the four copies of Opt. And yeah. then Curious Obsession is kind of its primary source of getting ahead on cards. If you put Curious Obsession onto one of your evasive flyers, every time you connect, you get to draw a card. But now, Minguchi has completely turned this around. He is firmly in the lead. Multiple chemistries inside in the graveyard, active to Fairy Hero of Dominaria and Golgoski. You can tell by the <laughs> look on his face, face, something <laughs> smells, something smells. And it's, it's his hand, because all he has is a basic island. He is displeased, to say the least. Oh no, more islands. How many is that off the top now? Three, four? <laughs> yeah. Whoops. And, and Golgoski realizing the writing on the wall here. Full advantage with Teferi, Hero of Dominari, and Minguchi able to win the unfavorable matchup here. So that's got to be Ooh. feeling, he's got to be feeling fantastic here. That's definitely a good win to pick up there. Unfortunately, just getting really, really flooded on Glagowski's side. That's not what you want to see off the top of your deck. You want to just keep going. You want to be able to answer your opponent's removal spells with counter magic, but just nothing of the sort for him in that matchup. Right, and there's two primary win conditions, two, two, two ways to kind of easy mode your way through trying to win specific matchups. One is, of course, getting the one-mana creature onto the battlefield with Curious Obsession and allowing the card advantage that you accumulate over time to win you the game, or slamming a Tempest Gin and getting it done that way. However, he played the Tempest Gin, but he didn't have counter magic to protect it. And Minguchi had the removal spell for the Tempest Gin. And after that, Golgoski simply just couldn't apply enough pressure to kind of seal that game. All right, so it looks like our players are almost ready to kick off the next matchup, which would be the Mono Red Aggro versus the White Weenies. Who do you favor in this matchup? Who is uh, who's looking good? So I'm, I, I kind of want to say coming into the tournament, you know, I thought the Mono Red deck was a pretty heavy favorite in this matchup. Yeah. But after watching the games play out in the course of the tournament, it just feels like the Mono White aggressive deck just uh, just plays better cards a lot of the time. It just The quality of its creature seems a little bit stronger, with the exception of, of course, Goblin Chain Whirler, which is kind of Red's trump card. So I think it's closer. Yeah. I still will give the edge to the Mono Red deck, but I don't think it's nearly as, as much as I think the, the perception was coming into this tournament. So we saw a snap keep from Andrea Mengucci and Glagowski mulliganing down to six, starting with a one-lander, and the emote wars have begun. Well, continue, I should say. Finding the third land, though, off the top for Canister, which is great. The Shadow Pyromans are getting in for the damage. Yeah, Andre Strasky had a very nice uh, tweet earlier where he says, the first thing you need to do when you play against Glagowski is go to settings yep. and mute emotes. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is, Venerian oh, Loxodon wow. 
This is the most important card in this specific matchup as it allows all your creatures to be able to fight through Goblin Chain Whirler. And not only that, just a simple 4-4 body is highly effective against Mono Red because all their burn deals three damage. So it cannot kill Loxodon. No Lava Coils in these matchups or in these deck submissions for the Mythic Invitational. And that's just a whole lot of power on the board. Even more so now with the Benelish Marshal flipping the Legion's Landing, getting in for a whole bunch of damage. That hurt. And look at this, Goblin Chain Whirler is not even going to be enough. It's You're not going to be enough here. <laughs> He's going to use Goblin Chain Whirler, and I d it won't even be able to kill any of the creatures on the battlefield. Lightning Strike, sorry, Wizard's Lightning getting rid of the Benelish Marshal and at least having some form of defense with the Goblin Chain Whirler. But wow, that was a turn from Mangucci. Absolutely. And now Goblin Chain Whirler, while it won't necessarily kill any of the creatures on the battlefield, it, w it, d it is a good blocker, right? Yeah. So if you just have it on the battlefield, Andrea Mangucci cannot attack with Tide Taker or the 2 2 lifelink token on the battlefield. However, Mangucci also has the answer mm -hmm. in the Goblin Chain to the Goblin Chain Whirler in Conclave Tribunal. And that's the sheer power of this mono white deck. Not only does it play a bunch of great aggressive creatures curving out to History of Banali and Banalish Marshall, it's, all, it's able to play multiple spells using the Convoke mechanic and play cards like Conclave Tribunal and Venerated Loxodon for nearly no mana. It's crazy what this white deck can do when it gets cooking. You can see Glagowski is crossing his fingers, toes, and anything else that, that can be crossed because he needs Needs something to help him out here. Yeah, and it looks like Legowski is going to go for the double block here and then use Lightning Strike to finish off that Venerated Loxodon because, you know, it talked about how difficult it is just to deal with a, yeah. an opposing 4-4. So the Spirit Token from the Tithe Taker. And then History of Banalia gets taken. First chapter creating the first knight. The Lightning Strike will dismiss off the Venerated Loxodon. And Glugowski setting this up pretty nicely here. Now yeah, he has a gob good. he has a goblin chain roller dealing with a flyer, and the chain roller is able to block the two twos. But again, Andrea Mangucci with that conclave tribunal in hand means that Glugowski will not have a blocker for the two two lifelink token on the battlefield. Another night now for Mangucci. Canister needs to draw something useful off the top, creating another lifelink token. This is the value of the Adanto first fort. Just creating that body every single time your board gets wiped. No, thank you very much. <laughs> Golgoski crossing his fingers <laughs> going, please don't have Conclave Tribunal. Please don't have it. And of well, course, Mangucci has it. Womp womp. Unfortunately, there it is. And Andrea Mangucci with the easy 2-0. He gets a spot in the finals. Right. And, you know, Mangucci just... Just... Playing just, I, I have, I, I don't even think I've seen him make a mistake so far this tournament, you know, because he's always talking about testing, testing, and testing. Yeah. And you know, if you think about it, this is the biggest Magic tournament in terms of prizes that we've ever held. And you know, a lot of these players put in tons of time. Even the night before the event, he was talking <laughs> about hanging out in the hotel lobby and playing for 10 or 12 straight hours. I have actually seen all his tweets being like, <laughs> I accidentally played for 10 hours today. I'm like. Accidentally, how do you do that? He also apparently sleeps for 10 hours every day, so that's basically all he does. He just sleeps and plays magic, that's all he does. And you know what? It's paying off. It is. He was able to actually beat the, the quote unquote bad matchups in uh, fairly handily both times. It looked like he was cool as a cucumber. I'm telling you, it is scarf power all the way. Congratulations to Andrea Mangucci, our first finalist, which means we still have to find his opponent. Yeah, definitely. And again, just Mingucci. I mean, Golgoski had to have been thrilled when he saw not a planes from his <laughs> opponent turn one with that turn one start. And the yeah. thing is, you know, he even had a reasonable start. He had some evasive creatures. He had the Tempest Gin, but you know, he he probably just needed to find a few more counter spells there just to be able to kind of keep up with uh, Andrea Mang the power of Andrea Mingucci's Esper Control deck. All right. Well, let's hear from Andrea now. Tossing it over to Becca.